Okay, good evening everyone. If I can welcome you this morning, I'll commence um, once uh, we're all silent and ready to um, participate in tonight's meeting. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to tonight's council meeting and I'd uh, like to thank you for attending. It's wonderful to see so many members in the gallery. Uh, copies of the agendas have been circulated and they've been available for about a week and also online. For those who don't have one, can you please share one with your, with your um, colleague or friend next to you, okay? Uh, I understand there's uh, quite a few people waiting for a particular item tonight, so we'll go to the agenda as listed and hopefully we'll get to that item. Uh, could you please switch your mobile phones off and put them on silent, please? There's no direct dialogue between the gallery and members of council. You're ha happy, to stay, um, happy for you to stay for the duration of the meeting or you can leave at your um, leisure at the conclusion of your item, okay? So we'll um, take that on board. Once again, thank you for attending and we'll now commence tonight's meeting. First of all, the membership is as listed. We have no apologies from councillors this evening. We now go on to item three, disclosures of conflicts of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest from councillors? No, Mr. Mayor. If there's not. We now go to item four, confirmation of minutes of the previous council meetings. I'll move that. We have so moved. We have Councillor Greco move and seconded Councillor second. Lawrence. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. We now go to item five, public question time. And as per our um, previous um, methods, we have uh, questions lodged in advance and those that have been lodged, uh, some being lodged right now, we'll have to address those um, by another medium. Those have been lodged in advance, I thank you for those. I'll now read out the questions and provide the written response that's been um, suggested by the officers. Quite a few of these questions have substantial preambles. I won't read the pre preamble, I'll just go through the question in, um, in brief. Members of the gallery, if you want to speak, if you do outside, please, others have come to listen to tonight's meeting. So can you please just respect that? Okay, we have a question here from Dennis Gibson from um, Preston. His question is, uh, followed by a preamble, in relation to um, Commission of Dundas Street. I'd like Council to explain to me what can be done about improving the appearance of the high volume trouble spots in a municipality like the area of Dundas Street I'm referring to. If anyone in Council doesn't believe this is a problem worth worrying about, then I would like issue a challenge for a representative of Council to accompany me every morning for one week of my daily dog walk and see what I see. Ample evidence that some people think it is appropriate to live the streets. Our response is that street cleaning will be inspected is an inspected area and will have this place on a high priority list. Little patrol officers will also inspect the site on a daily basis and ensure that the area is cleaned up. Uh, we also note that there's a large private bin on uh, the doorstop of Aldi. Uh, unfortunately, there's overspill, so we'll have to contact Aldi in relation to monitoring that. And street cleaning will also contact our local laws officers to uh, speak to Aldi and other issues in relation to litter management along the street. We'll also provide a written response to, um, to Dennis and thank him for that question. Uh, another question uh, from this evening is from Oro uh, Packer uh, from Northcote. The question is, now that council has made the sensible decision to keep Johnson Park as a dog on Lee Park, I was wondering how the council plans to improve the signage in the park to let the public clearly know this and how council plans to enforce the ruling. The park is currently being used by a large number of dog owners and as an off-lead off area and some of the public education signage needs to be impl implemented. Our response is, as part of the implementation of the do an, a domestic animal management plan, all dog off-lead parks will be appropriately signed to let park users know that they are an off-lead area. Once this is complete, signage in the remaining parks will be replaced over time. This will include regulatory information including dog and dog on lead signage. So thank you, Ray, for that question. That will also receive a wholly written response from the officers. Uh, we also have a, a, a question here lodged on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. George Edis of uh, uh, Preston from Robert Couchy. There are about 10 questions here. I'll just go through the crux of this. Um, this is in relation to Council's reversal of a decision in relation to um, uh, 20 Herbert Street uh, right away. I'll just go to the two questions um, at the end. There are substantially far too many here. Uh, first one being, why has Council reversed the decision it made less than two months earlier at its ordinary Council meeting on the 21st of March 2016, where Council resolved to reopen the road? 
Why was this item an urgent business item and why weren't the affected parties notified prior to the meeting? After an ex exhaustive and comprehensive consultation process that took place well over four years to complete and come to a resolution, how can this decision be completely overturned in less than two months? This has the appearance of incompetence by the council officers or councillors or a combination of both. Which is it? Uh, council of Governance Local Laws allows two questions at any time and all nine questions will be responded in relation to this matter. There are quite a few here and will obviously provide a much more detailed response to those questions. Uh, we have a question here from Serena O'Malley uh, from, from Reservoir. Uh, on the 22nd of April 2016, I received in part the following response to my questions about the conduct of public question time. In the coming weeks, Council will commence a review of the recent changes to public question time to see how it's working. As part of the review, Officer will, look at, will again look at how the councils, other Councils deal with their public question time and how we'll differ to government. Can you please provide a progress report on the review of public question time and provide a time uh, Time, a firm time frame for reinstating the right for members of the public to ask their own questions from the gallery. Uh, Council has advised the Minister for Local Government that a review will be commenced in July to allow time to review the new processes implemented in March 2016. All residents will be advised of any outcomes from review and Section 20 of the Subdivision Act 1988 guidelines, uh, these for Council as well. We'll provide that to um, Serena as well and thank you for the question. And we have another question here from Alex Patel of um, Preston. Okay, what process did Council engage in around options to the Ruthven site and also for the Lakeside site? Uh, Ms Patel, I think we'll provide a written response to you in relation to that. It'll be quite a bit to cover and also I understand that item has been considered as notice of motion in tonight's uh, agenda as well. So thank you for that. You'll be able to state that and listen to our debate and, also provide, and you'll also get a written response to that as well. We've also had quite a few others submitted tonight that we'll um, hold off and more than likely um, provide written responses to as they've not been submitted before the commencement of the Council meeting. So you're more than welcome to stay for these items, uh, members of the gallery. Once your item's heard, you may leave or you can stay for the duration and we're welcome to stay of course, so thank you for that. We'll now go to consideration of reports. Mr Mayor, I'd move a suspension of standing orders so that we could consider 8.2 because I understand there's a considerable number of people in the I gallery on that, that. <laughs> um, uh, Point of order. P um, point of order, um, Mr Mayor, I believe um, that um, if we were to do that, that would require that all notices of motion be considered at once. We actually don't need a no, suspension of standing orders. We can just move the agenda. <laughs> Is that clear, councillors? Well, I'm happy to move that way. The second. Oh, second. Okay. Makes so, sense. what's your recommendation, Council Owens? Uh, that uh, council proceeds to deal with item 8.2 uh, first, and then re returns to the order of the agenda. Do the notice of motion. Point I think order. we'll do 8.1, 8.2 in order. That's the appropriate okay. way of doing it. If that's the appropriate way, then I move that we deal with 8.1, 8.2, and then return to the order of the business. We have a seconder. Okay. Councillor Valella will second it. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Uh, members Mr. Mr. Mick, sorry, if, may, if, if I may, um, if, may I also suggest uh, gender item number 11, petitions, because there is a petition in relation to um, the matter that a lot of the residents are here to to hear about. So I would welcome that uh, we also move agenda item number 11 to follow the now new notice of motion. Please. Second up. Oh, happy to second that. Second Councillor Lawrence. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank Members you. of the gallery will now go straight to notice of motion which is item 8. We'll deal with those items first then we'll go to uh, petitions, item 11. So we now are going to consider item 8.1 as the first item for consideration. 8.1, which is the item saying no to the use of corporate tax havens, moved by Councillor Lawrence. Got a seconder. Happy to second. Second Councillor Lee. Councillor Lawrence, you have the floor. Um, yes, Mr Mayor. This um, issue has been uh, raised in the public arena and obviously a range of uh, through the famous Panama Papers, which involves global um, behaviours by corporations and others. 
But it has been um, more recently released that there are a number of Australian companies, Australian entities involved. And most alarmingly, of course, is um, uh, notwithstanding due process in terms of what the Australian Tax Office has to do, is uh, these arrangements, um, even when they are within the law, really offend some of the core values of Australians. And, and I just wonder how we can apply a negative uh, filter, if you like, an ethical filter, um, to these uh, suppliers as they are processed um, by the Australian Tax Office. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Second, I wish to add anything to it. Uh, nothing further to add. Mr. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, I was just going to propose a, a slight additional set of words to the mover and seconder. Um, it would be to point three. Uh, following the reference to the Australian Prime Minister and Treasurer, um, I think it would probably be pertinent to also add um, Opposition Leader, Shadow Treasurer and leaders of other, been, other, other political parties. Um, so Thank I you. If you can draw that wording to the officers, Councillor Lawrence has accepted that and so is the second, I'm assuming. Okay. There's no further debate on that matter. Speak. Speaking, you want to speak, Councillor Walsh? Please do. Um, and surprise, surprise, I'm speaking against. Um, Look, um, this is not a, um, a council issue. It has nothing. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with council, and um, it is um, and it is a waste of time, a waste of money to even um, to even consider this. Nothing to do with business. It's um, it's federal election season. It's um, it's and um, it's council owners and other people have used um, have used this to um, to make. Um, Councillor Walsh, stick to the substantive without mentioning councillors. On, um, um, on Mr. Turnbull and Councillor Walsh. Oh, you see, um, no, um, Councillor um, Fontana, I'd, um, I would like to be heard. So this has absolutely nothing to do with council. It is just, um, it is just a way to, um, for, um, for people to, um, um, to want to support support their labour mates, so I'm not, um, so I'm not going to be um, part. Thank of you, Councillor Walsh. Councillor Greco. Uh, just very quickly, uh, uh, Mr. Bear, um, oh, I think this is a very good motion. I mean, <coughs> given my my past history, that um, I, I actually worked for the Australian Tax Office, I'm fully aware of the issues associated with uh, with tax havens, where it's basically they black holes for for tax. Why it's relevant to to council is that uh, if the take of the federal government is compromised because of tax havens and because of these types of schemes that, um, that multinationals and others get involved in, then as a result of that there's less money available in the form of grants and <coughs> for local government. And we've seen, Mr. Point Mayor, of order. Sit down, Councillor Walsh. I want to hear Councillor Grego. Uh, and we've seen, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and we've seen in, in, in recent years how the federal government is actually chipped away at reducing the grants that are available for infrastructure projects and for many other projects, even, uh, even in relation to age services and things like that, um, that actually impact on local communities and impact on local government. So I welcome this um, resolution and, and I welcome that the, uh, that the that, that we urge the federal government to be um, much more resourceful and stronger in tackling these um, uh, tax, uh, these tax um, havens and tax loopholes so that more money can then trickle down uh, to local government for the services that we provide. Thank you, um, Councillor Greco. I do have a point of order. Um, Councillor Greco mentioned um, grants. Um, Section 44 um, does prohibit the Commonwealth Government. Section 4 of the Australian Constitution prohibits um, the federal government from delivering state to local government. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Councillor Lawrence, you can close the debate if you like. If there's no further speakers. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Look, uh, the council has seen an incredible erosion of Commonwealth grants to this uh, uh, council. It's something in the order of many millions of dollars that we now miss. And in fact, we only get in Darabin equivalent Commonwealth grants that they get in Turak because of the formulas applied, and the formulas are applied uh, very um, tightly. I would note we've got an extra $2 million this year on roads, and that is a sort of feature of, of a coalition government with nationals who occasionally get a top up. But this, and I would also uh, uh, refute the inference against my character by, made by Councillor Walsh, and note that this uh, um, notice of motion was submitted before the calling of the election, 12th of May, and it was somewhat uh, an administrative error, error um, 
that it's now coming here. So it was coming much earlier. But I, I'm glad it did wait because there has been matters uh, for the public arena for the actual names of the Australian companies have since been released more recently so that we can publicly debate these issues. Hey, you right. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Walsh, please don't interrupt when Councillor Lawrence is speaking. I'll now put that to a vote with the additional points. Uh, point three of the recommendation is Arthur Treasurer and add Opposition Leader, Shadow Treasurer and Leaders and Treasury Spokesman of relevant political parties. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you, Councillor. The division. The division is called by Councillor Walsh. All those in favour, please stand. I name Councillor Lee, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Williams, Councillor Cedars, Councillor Fontana, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Greco, Councillor Deleuze. Those against, please stand. I name Councillor Walsh. Thank you. Next item we'll consider is um, 8.2, the urgent purchase of the former Ruthven Primary School site in Glasgow Avenue Reservoir to secure open space. Moved by Councillor Lawrence. Do we have a seconder? Happy to second, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I I have amendments. I'm happy to move. I'll take the mover. The seconder, Councillor Lee. I've got an amendment. Can we hear your amendment, please? Yes, I did put an amendment, and that was circulated to councillors. So I hope that will be on screen for the benefit of the gallery. So, um, it, the text is in red. Um, essentially, um, oh, it's probably some transcription error, but. Um, essentially, it, it uh, expresses Council's desire to uh, enter into a partnership with relevant authorities to purchase a former Ruthven site at Glasgow Avenue. Um, and also, the, the third point is to uh, Council to receive a re report as soon as possible on the various costing options, including the impacts on the Council's operating cash flow and other financial indicators, and options to address any long term deficits or shortfalls as a result of drawing down of, on the open space reserve. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Is that acceptable? Happy, happy to accept thank the you, amendment. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. And, and I thank Councillor Lee for that as too. That's been worked with assistance from officers to ensure that we actually cover as much as we can in relation to this uh, notice of motion. Mr Mayor, I also have an amendment um, with, the, with the second thing, which I did circulate. Um, if we can just... It's really uh, just, uh, just noting... Um, Coming. It's coming in, yeah. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of traffic. Okay. Okay. <coughs> uh, it's there in blue. Um, it's really just noting uh, the community's urgent call to keep the whole of former Ruthven Primary School site in public hands, uh, noting the two well attended public meetings and also noting the numerous uh, motions and public calls by council because this has been going on for a while. Um, to keep the site in public hands and to be used as open space and park. So it's just noting, I think, Mr. It's acknowledging. Mayor. Yeah, it's acknowledging the and noting, so we there. all have it there. Um, and uh, there was, I, I did propose um, also to add uh, something about... Uh, about um, we'll stick with what's there, Councillor Lalla. Yes, right. I did okay. want to prov yeah. provide some history Councilor, anyway. Okay, yeah, that's that's that. accept that. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Before, Councilor McCarthy. before we move to, um, to Councillor Lawrence, I just would ask... Um, uh, in relation to the Lakeside Secondary College site, which is also being dealt with through this process. And I, I note there's no reference to it in the motion, but it has been, both sites have been referenced jointly. Um, whether Councillor Lawrence um, would consider including a reference to the Lakeside Secondary College site as part of Council's proposed um, offer of purchase in relation to the Ruthven site. Um, I'm happy to accept that. I'm, I'm taking... Um, uh, the assumption we're talking about the land between the bike path and the the other part section. So just so people know, a piece of land that's um, got a certain dimension we've dealt with. Which will firm, could that be in the, the, in the, could that be in the amendment? So, so just to clarify, council has previously moved, moved resolutions in relation to its concerns about the future of both sites. I think it's important if yeah. council is going to move a motion, and I support the intent of this motion, um, to also take seriously. Council's concerns about the future of the Lakeside site, particularly the Merry Creek frontage component, which yes. has been addressed in this chamber. <coughs> so I would just ask, and I'm happy to provide the words. I think that's um, important. If, if the mover is amenable to that, then I'm happy to provide words that would include a reference to Lakeside Secondary College. Yeah. Yes. In, in particular, the environmentally sensitive section of land that we're That's what we can see. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Um, 
Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And you've uh, accepted that? Yes. Yes, accepted that. So um, I'll just keep my comments brief because I know this is now a complex issue that is involving federal candidates, a state minister here, a minister for planning, possibly a minister for a treasurer because the land is almost in central high hands and obviously the finance minister who's also a local member and the planning minister. So it's quite complex. I'm also aware of the distress caused to residents today who have received letters from the Fast Tracking Authority, which shows that the 50 or so people who signed up on the 25th of May to present their objection to the fast tracking process for full residential at four storeys have not even been included on that list and only previous people had been included. Now, again, I'm not sure where the administrative error has occurred, but this land seems to be surrounded by administrative errors. So the purpose of my motion today is to really talk about this section primarily east of Edgars Creek, going to High Street, to Monies Road, to Broadhurst, which is a large section of Maryland's estate. I have forwarded councils, all councillors, a map of the 1920 outline. You can see there, it was cutting edge, garden city suburb design. It had two large triangular parks there, and many other small ones. And it even had a town hall was meant to be there. So, um, I've also sent my analysis of that area over the last 50 years where four sections of open space have been sold by Preston and Darabin Council, two schools have been shut by the Kennett government and also adjacent to here other schools nearby have also been shut. So that has robbed us of formal, informal and casual open space and many of this, these things occurred 20 years ago and there was a joint agreement to use Ruthven Primary School as open space after hours. There was $360,000 worth of capital works put into it and the school helped us share that space with the community. It was closed, the education department walked away from that memorandum of understanding. We're now getting a situation where we're trapped in a fast tracking process to make it go to high density residential, which is best suited to Preston Junction, not to this part, to this garden suburb. So it's important that we 20 seconds. do uh, pass this motion, send a clear message that this preservation of public open space is a high priority for council. Yes, we would have liked the state government to give it for free, but we will use uh, within fair and reasonable bounds our open space reserves if we have to, to save this and the critical sections Time. near Lakeside. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Greco, as seconder, do you wish to speak? I was seconded. I beg your pardon, Councillor Bellola. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor, uh, and uh, thank you to Councillor Lawrence for uh, putting forward this notice of motion. I think we've had a significant discussion in this chamber over, I think, now three years, Mr Mayor, um, uh, regarding this, the site. I think the officers need to be acknowledged for their negotiate, you know, negotiating on behalf of us, of, of Council, of negotiating in good faith. Um, and I think the intention all along was to, to fight for the land to be, to be gifted to council, uh, to residents, because it's public land and should be made in public hands. Uh, and we fought very hard for that, uh, for that principle, and I thank the officers for their work. Something happened um, uh, about three months ago. Something happened about three months ago and this fast track um, uh, process started. We were all caught unawares. I think that uh, was a real turning point. Um, it's a wrong thing to do. Uh, but however, what it has done is uh, it's galvanised the community. It's made, us, it's made us focus on this issue. It's put pressure on the state government to, to, to act on behalf of its residents. It's also um, you know, quite timely. There's a federal election now. It's into all tiers of government focusing on this issue. But I think the important thing, as noted, noted by um, Councillor Lawrence, is that uh, this is an area, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I think it's accepted in the, in the chamber that it is deserving of public open space. Too many schools, too many public schools are closed down. Um, and I think it all happened uh, kind of unevent, uh, as an uh, unevent and uh, as if it was all going to go away in people's memory banks, but it hasn't. 
The residents know, the residents remember, and the residents don't want it to happen again. So I was really encouraged, Mr Mayor, by the, the two community meetings we had, and, and I'm really confident that what we are proposing here, Mr Mayor, is that we have the total backing of our residents. We are not operating in isolation. We have the mandate from the residents to go ahead. This money Time. for open reserves, it's the right thing to do to spend the money on open space. We shouldn't have to, but we Thank need you, to. Thank you, Councillor Thank you. Any other speakers? <laughs> Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll just speak very briefly to my amendment, if I may. Um, I think the issue of the uh, Ruthen um, site and the lake site, uh, site has been well documented, and uh, I thank the residents who turned up today to hear this important discussion. My amendment was uh, really to fine-tune it because I agree with the principle that we do need to look at our open space reserves uh, in order to achieve fair and equitable outcomes for open space allocation in the north of the city. However, we do, we do need to bear in mind that that projected $12 million in open space reserve is built up over many years. And that $12 million also forms part of our $40 million cash balance in order for the council to operate on a month-by-month -month basis. I think that's very important because if and when we do dip into that operating cash reserve, that will have impact on our cash flow, of our cash balance at each time of the council. And we have been advised in the past of the financial impact and the impact on our financial indicator should we deepen that reserve. So I really want to see that uh, in an open format so that we can debate this issue in a fair, open manner. I agree that we do need to, as I said earlier, to look at the way in which we allocate open space reserve. But my concern is that if we do deep into that cash reserve, that is essentially taking money away from our future councils. And we cannot take away money from our future councils without looking at, looking at the long term financial impacts of that dipping into the reserve and how we're going to address that deficit because we cannot take money away without putting some money back for the future generations. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Lee. Yeah. Further speakers? <coughs> Councillor Sudas. Um, thanks, Mr Mayor. At the risk of uh, bringing the House down, I want to speak in opposition. Um, now, the, as Councillor Bellow rightly points out, this has been uh, percolating for <coughs> some while, but Sadly to say, notwithstanding all the uh, myriad of emails that I've seen over the last few days, nothing has swayed my position in, in terms of people losing sight of the exercise. The, the first point, and I echo the sentiments of Council Lee, I think the equity argument has been lost here, and I made the point in terms of looking at our open space strategy. If you want to look at the biggest concentration of open space reserves within the City of Darwin, it's in the Latrobe Ward. No other ward within the City actually boasts that level of open space. So, quite frankly, I think there's a bit of an illusion uh, when it comes to the realisation or realising this 500 metre proximity uh, guideline which supposedly should trigger uh, some kind of knee-jerk reaction on the part of the council, and that's what this is in relation to this issue. It's a stake up an issue. Why should I be party to an action this evening which talks about forking over, and even if the state government were to accept, which I doubt, and I hope they put us out of our misery and tell us, no, they're going to put out a private tender, quite frankly. <coughs> because this is just an anathema that we would have not a black hole, a green hole. You want to sink one total budget spend on this particular issue and ignoring the fact that there's significant decontamination of the site and rehabilitation. Not to mention future expenditure that's required to actually bring up the scratch to make it into a park. I, I, th I think um, it's a bit of a, you know, with all due respect, um, the timing, as Councillor Villa mentioned, I think uh, is appropriate that we've got a 20 seconds. The, the conjunction of the federal election and, dare I say, just a couple of months further after that, a council election. But we're talking about an equal spend of resources across the three wards, not to drain one budget into one ward. And I've been uh, furthermost in, in sponsoring positions, like Keon Park Kinder, in another ward as opposed to my own. But you know, you've got to look at rebalancing. Thank you, Councillor Tyne. I just wonder where the, the local <coughs> sports stadium sits in this context, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers? Councillor McCarthy. Oh, look, I'll, um, I'll speak in favour of the motion, and I thank um, Councillor Lawrence and uh, Councillor Valella for accepting um, the additional point in reference to Lakeside Secondary College, and particularly the section close to the Mary Creek, because whilst the focus of the motion is on, on the Maryland, uh, sorry, on the Ruthven site, um, within the general precinct we also have uh, a pristine um, section of the Mary Creek frontage, which is at very severe risk. And I think it's very important that while we're looking to preserve what could be a fantastic local park, 
that is going to require investment from council, and I want councillors to take this very seriously, um, if we're going to do this, and I fully support us doing this, we actually need to invest in transforming the Ruthven Primary School site into a local park. And the reason being, it's quite simple, and I, I pick up on Councillor Cedis's point, but I take a different view. For 2,000 residents in the reservoir area, and particularly in this pocket of reservoir, um, there is no park within 500 metres. That's Council's own data. For 2,500 residents, uh, there is limited open space to provide it for those residents. So whilst we might identify other pockets of open space in the general Latrobe, this is not about wards, this is actually about city, and this is about equity of access to all residents to green open space within, um, within walking distance. And when we talk about walking distance, we've got to talk about our people's ability to get to these locations. Um, we have an ageing community in some parts of our city and we need to make sure that people have access to green open space. I was happy to support Councillor Lawrence's amendment at the last meeting, which was about making a financial contribution to this space, for the same reason that I think what this points out is something we are severely lacking as a council in, which is actually putting money behind our open space strategy, which actually says five, within 500 metres there will be open space for every resident. There is no strategic allocation for these sorts of purchases Open, green open space is a premium um, thing now in the inner city and we need to make sure that we manage to grab hold of those pieces that are going to make the, a, a world of difference to the livability of this city. If we are the place to live, then let's make sure that we've got the green open spaces to prove it. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Councillor Gwitter. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, look, I'd like to say a few words in relation to this, but before I do that, I'd like just to offer two or three additional points to, to the motion in order to uh, make it a bit more complete. The additional points are, are, are this, Mr Mayor. Uh, one is that, uh, that we write to the statement uh, ministers to reaffirm council's uh, position um, uh, that, the rezoning, that, the rezoning, that the fast track rezoning process be halted. That's the first point. And that was originally in the, in, in the, in the, in the motion. The, the second point I think we should add to the motion is that, uh, that, that when we write to the state ministers that we, that we ask the state minister to, to direct the government departments that are negotiating the, the, the land um, with the council to reconsider the long-term leasing option that has been put forward to us by many, many community members. That's the second point I'd like to add. And the third point I'd like to add is in regards to um, a process of keeping the community informed of what the negotiated outcome eventually is so that, like that, we can actually keep our residents um, up to date on where things are at with the, um, uh, uh, with the negotiations. So I'd like to include those three additional points. I'm not sure if the move and the second are happy, happy with those. Where, where do they actually fall? I actually think we did some of those with the last motion. Yeah. But I'd just we, like to put them in well, this we actually, motion. We actually got in another motion. Yeah, so. but I'd like to put them in this motion to complete this motion. And um, so the letter's already gone out. Letter's already gone out. Sorry? Letters, you're requesting me to write. It's already gone out. The letter's already gone out. Yeah, you're but right the, the this motion, motion talks about writing to the, to the minister. I'm just saying, to the, to the state ministers. We did it at the last yeah, council. But yes. it's right to the ministers reaffirming these, these particular points. So if the member has said that they're happy with those, um, I'm happy with it. Yep. Why not? So what is to keep the community informed? Secondly, is to is to is that the ministers direct the government department um, um, uh, to. Um, Councillor Greco. Councillor Greco. Yep. Okay, we've already had advice today that leasing is not an option. It won't be considered. It's not part of the. But that's policy. from the government department. Right, that, that's 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 already been reaffirmed. Yeah, that's from the government department. What, what that's been reaffirmed. So we, we 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 need to be a little bit more sensible yeah. in relation to appropriate um, suggestions and how we can best yeah. address and solve this. That, that's not going to be Mr. considered. Mr. Mayor, I've only suggested this because I understand that. I'm fully aware of that. That's why I'm putting this motion. Is that it's actually asking the ministers to direct their their the government departments to re-look at the long-term um, leasing arrangements to see whether that is also a viable Thank option. you, Councillor Greg. I'll take some advice from the office here. Mr Hamilton, that what is the policy relation to that leasing from the departments here? Uh, three, Mr Mayor, so the advice we've been given at the departmental level is that leasing is not an option at this point in time. Um, I can't speak for the minister. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep. okay, so if, if, it, if it assists us moving along, Councillor Greg has proposed an amendment if it's not acceptable to the mover and seconder. I'm happy to second it to, well, to keep the wording. the wording is the issue here. I mean, I've heard it verbatim, but I haven't actually got anything down. That, that's the problem. And it should have been circulated in advance. Like, others have taken the time to circulate these amendments 
so we can incorporate it instead of going for, you know, run, run here and there. That's the well, we only received this advice late this afternoon, Mr. Mayor. That's why I've put this. It's a way of actually pushing the... Um, the, the Let's the take some time, put it down, and I'll wait until you've got all the words yeah, correctly. Well, I'll, I'll read it. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's read I'll, it out. I'll read it out again. It's That'll be pretty, better. It's pretty straightforward. That, that we write to the state members uh, uh, to reaffirm the, the council position that the, that the fast track rezoning process be halted. That's one point. One, yep. Yeah. The, the second point is, is that, that we write to the state uh, ministers um, um, asking them to direct the government departments to um, negotiating with council to reconsider the long-term leasing option as suggested by community members. Two. And the third point, is pretty straightforward point, is that we keep the community informed of, nego of, of the negotiated outcomes with the, uh, with the relevant um, departments. So just through you, Mr Mayor, just, um, so is that a motion replacing the second paragraph? No, it's not replacing, it's an addition to, it's not replacing, it's an addition to the... Uh... Is it accepted or not? Um, look, Mr. Mayor, um, we've actually done most of those things already. We've we'll done just be those doing it again. things again and again. And for the purposes of, of taking this debate forward, I know it's a mixed message, but I, I'm just going to accept it because, um, you know, otherwise we're going to be here all night again. If I may, Mr. Mayor, and if I may, last year. I just wanted to seek some clarification because the original notice of motion is the intent to purchase. And then we now that. have an uh, amendment that we're deviating away from, from that. Yep. I just want to get some clarification on whether that's compatible with the original intent of the motion. Mr. CEO. Yeah, if the two options are included, we will try both, then you know, the, it's better for council to give a one direction if that's what you want. Okay. Can, can I propose uh, to, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Greco that, that there is um, an element of his proposal which. Is, I would not think is inconsistent, which is keeping the community informed, yes. um, which is not included in the motion. I no. think it's implicit, yeah. um, but maybe could be Correct. explicitly stated. Keeping the community informed in relation to the process um, that might might keep us moving. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, that actually deviates from from the original motion, yeah, Councillor Greco. I will also, if I can add something. It's just a just uh, direct uh, us inform me as well that's true. Uh, the site requires cleanup, but our negotiation with the department has been they have to clean up and give it to us. In a lease situation they wouldn't be able they might not do that. In, uh, if you're buying you can always put a condition that is asbestos and environmentally safe site it need to be cleaned up. So the mover hasn't accepted that. Well, the, there's three points are acceptable, but the other, will you're sending a mixed message. The ministers, you're saying we're asking you for this, but we want you to direct, ask you to direct us for that. Mm. There's more confusion. So it lapses. <clears throat> well, there's no second for that, so that item lapses. So, so Councillor McCarthy. I, I, look, I, I, I proposed two options. One was to second Councillor Greco's motion to keep it moving. The All second right. one was for Councillor Greco to split his motion because the, some of them are acceptable, I would look, think. Look, just, look, just to point. keep this moving, look, I'm, I'm happy to split the motion. Let's so we'll it. put the, um, the, the issues of um, um, the, about informing the community. I think that's very important. Yes. I mean, we've got the community out here tonight. Yes. So what is that? Uh, I noticed that in the original motion, we also expressed uh, uh, um, to um, to ask to, that the fast tracking process be halted. So I'm proposing that maybe we also we continue to leave that in there too, as as the in your as the original motion actually stated. Because in the new motion we've actually removed that. Too. We've actually done it at the last minute, but we'll do it again. So we'll yeah. just get another letter, same letter. Yeah, it's reaffirming. Yes. So if we leave that. And, and, and the third point, I, I'm happy to leave that so we can continue Slap with the debate. Slap it. Okay. Uh, if, uh, look, is that look accepted? I, I really yes, have to accept that. That's, that's okay, accepted. That's great. Thank you. I'm glad we've been able to, uh, to, to do that. Two minutes, Councillor Greco. Yeah, thanks. Look, first of all, I, I think um, what we have to say is that I, I think no, we really have to um, thank the community uh, for, their, for really their mighty effort in getting behind councillors around this particular issue. Uh, what's actually moved? 
and created and made this front and centre for the uh, for the local member and for the ministers is the fact that the community has held two uh, meetings uh, where the participation has been quite high and that the community actually were quite. Uh, um, uh, strong in their opposition of, of, of turning that part or turning that area into development, and what the community has been able to achieve out of those meetings, out of those public meetings, is that there's a commitment. I think I think we we could say that there is a commitment by the government and by uh, other parties involved that, that that should remain a part. The question is how we get there. And, and that's, that's what we have to travel through next. So I really want to thank the community for, for their mighty effort in supporting us in order to get that message across. Because that message wasn't being heard loud and clear. And as we saw on Saturday, on Sunday, um, um, Minister Scott said, I can, I can hear that message that the community wants to keep this as a part. That, that's the first point that needs to be said. The, the other thing that needs to be said is, is that really this should never have come to this particular point. Really, it, you know, the land should never have been put out on the market by the state government. The state government should have um, informed um, the, um, the, 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 the council right at the outset before any process get, get put in place, because that is, you know, that, that is uh, important land. And, um, but I, I'm glad that because of the community effort and the community support that we've been able to basically stop this process and get the minister to come back to us uh, with, a, with a viable and fair option about how council can reacquire that land. Thank, Thank you. you, Councillor Greco. Thank you. Any other speakers who haven't spoken? Councillor Walsh. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Walsh. Uh, this is tough. It's, um, it really is. Um, I, For or against Councillor Walsh? Um, I'm speaking against. Um, this is a tough one. It really is, um, because we need. Um, because I understand the need for open space. I, re um, I really do, um, and see that. Um, and see that it's important. And I've listened and um, listened today. I've spoken to um, um, to residents in the um, in the surrounding area, um, and I can under and I can understand their desire. However, um, I have strong reservation, reservations about this um, because, it, um, because I wonder when, how affordable um, this is. Um, $11.9 million, nearly $12 million. It's, um, it is... No, no, that's... Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Walsh, continue. Um, but it is, um, but it is, a lot, um, but, it, but um, still it's... A, um, it's um, it's a lot of money, and um, you know I know um, I note that um, Minister S um, Scott has um, you know um, you know made the comments about what the um, community want, but I guess my message to him and for us to remember, he was one of the guys who voted for in the state parliament. Who voted for rate capping? We're in a new rate capping. Stick sure. to the stamping motion. No, 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 um, no. Um, you always do this, Mr. Mayor. But if this is not. This is part of a substantive motion because it is because my point. About time, Councillor Walsh. Time, time. Thank valid. you. Time, Councillor Lawrence. You can close the debate if there's no further speaker. Um, I'll just close the debate. Absolutely. This this matter is about a pocket of reservoir that affects many thousands of people. It is about this council's commitment to quality open space and a place to live for everyone, regardless of postcode. It is also about balancing the books, and we do need to look at our financial books and what a fair price is. And some of us may think zero dollars is a fair price, and you know we have to get that argument and have the tough negotiations. But the books need to be balanced. For hectares of land sold by council and state government that has paid for all this stuff we're enjoying here. The council collected the millions. Of course, it wasn't millions then, but it's worth millions now. The council has already taken from this community. The state government has already taken from this community. So the bookkeeping has to come back to the residents at Reservoir. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you.
Uh, Councillor Greco has submitted his uh, amendments to that motion. The debate's been had, closed. I will now put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? That item is carried. I call for a division. Division has been called. I ask all those in favour of the motion to stand. I name Councillor Lee, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Williams, Councillor Fontana, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Gregor, Councillor Villada. Those against to please stand. I name Councillor Walsh and Councillor Cedars. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Not necessarily guys, really not. Okay. Uh, that item has been dealt with. We now move on to petitions. If you're wanting to leave, you may do so quietly, please. That item has been uh, addressed. We now go to petitions. Um, Mr Mayor, thank you. I'd just like to table um, a petition to, uh, to the CEO. And I have copies here as well for uh, for councillors. Uh, this petition, uh, Mr. Mayor. Seconder, seconder. I'm happy to oh, second. Oh, happy to second it. Read it first, councillor Bell. Before. Yes, I shall read it. Um, we we the undersigned believe the former Woodman site should stay in public hands for the present and future needs of the community. We urge Darren Council to negotiate on behalf of residents to one not allow private development on the site, and that means entirety. Number two, negotiate with state government to urge it to make a fair and just offer to council to maintain the site in public hands. Thank you, Councillor. I think it's pretty straightforward, Mr Mayor. I think uh, this uh, petition was, uh, circulate, was um, yeah, uh, circulated yesterday at the, pub at the very successful community meeting that we had. Um, and uh, there, were, uh, there were about approximately 150 people there. On a, on a very miserable Sunday, um, but I think uh, the, the show of, uh, of, of residents there really highlighted uh, the importance this issue is to them. And I'd like to, I'd like to think, Mr Mayor, that uh, for every one person that was there, there are another ten who would have liked to have been there. Um, I think what, this, uh, what the um, uh, petition does, Mr Mayor, is provide a mandate uh, for the officers uh, and, and yourself uh, to go and, and, the, and uh, Mr. Mr. Dev to go and negotiate, um, knowing that the community is well and truly behind them, to get a fair and just offer to council. I think that's critical now. A, the critical part is that we get the whole site, not just you know a, a, a small corner of it, and say that's enough open space. It's the whole site. And secondly, the fair and just offer to council. That is, that is critical in light of obviously the budget implications and the fact that we have to pay Thank for it Thank you, anyway. Councillor So I'm really pleased uh, that the uh, residents have gone ahead with this and it's, a, it's an absolute honour to table it here tonight. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Thank you, Councillor Bellow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McCarthy, there's no need to speak to it, it's just been tabled, but thanks for sharing your, your comments to us. Uh, Mr Mayor, there's also a petition from the previous 25th meeting I've just tabled. A point of order, I believe that um, can, if, he, if Councillor Rollins wants to say what he needs to um, provide a copy to all councillors. Uh, a lot of these aren't signed, Councillor Rollins, so I only submit the ones that are signed, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you. Not compliant. So I'll put that to a vote to accept that Councillor Varela's tabling of the petition. Carried. Thank you very much. Are there any further petitions? Councillor Lee. Yes, I do have a petition to table as well. Mr. Could you read it out, please, uh, Councillor? It's been circulated. Uh, it's a petition from George Street Residency in Preston. Um, it says, and I'll read, um, this is a request by the residents of George Street that in order to enable residents to park their cars safely without the risk of damage by passing vehicles, that the following are permitted. Uh, parking on the east side of George Street with two passenger side wheels on the nature strip without being fined under the road rules 197-1. Uh, filing this, we require the road to be widened as the damage inflicted upon the vehicles, especially at the mouth of George Street and Murray Road, is beyond reasonable. We do not accept any other alternatives uh, as this will compound the shortage of parking that already exists, such as uh, no standing zone on the side of the street or zigzag parking. Seconder. Happy to second. Second, Councillor McCarthy. Thank, thank you. you. I, I refer this to our follow up for our next council meeting. Yep. Thank you very much, Councillor Lee. Are there any further petitions? Oh, put to a vote. All those in favour? Carried. Any further petitions from councillors? If there's none, thank you very much. That concludes item 11. We now go to item six. Any orders? There's Oh, just back to normal. Uh, members of the gallery, you can stay for the remainder of the meeting or you can uh, leave quietly now if your item has been heard and addressed. And if
If you can do so quietly, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you. No, you can't. You can't. Sorry. Thank you, members of the gallery. If you want to stay, can you stay? Otherwise, leave quietly. We now go, go on to item 6, consideration reports. First one being 6.1, Surplus State Government Lane, 421 High Street, Preston. We have a recommendation. I, to, I want to move the recommendation with a slight amendment. Which Councillor Lee has moved the recommendation. Yes, Second to Councillor Williams. Councillor Lee. Uh, so the amendment I have is to add uh, between High Street and the Preston Market uh, railway station, because so I think mm -hmm. that was original text was missing. Yep. And I also added a further point F, uh, request the land sale process be halted until formal correspondence received in relation to recommendation one and two. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Okay, and Councillor William has sec uh, thank, seconded that, so you can Councilor, speak to it now. Councillor, thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillors have been briefed by this. Um, this is a particular section on High Street 421, which is in the middle in front of the town hall. What it does do is that it creates a strategic corridor between High Street and, uh, as uh, 2.8 suggests, President Mark and Railway Station above it. And it sits in our President Structure Master Plan. This land was acquired by the state uh, back in 2008, I believe, and uh, for some unknown reason, they decided that land to be surplus to their use, and they want us to, again, give us first right of refusal, um, perhaps not too dissimilar to the an issue. However, we as a council need to determine that this land is still valuable, is still required for public access, um, as per the Ruthen side, perhaps, and that this actually forms a strategic peg in the Darabin, uh, in the Preston Master, uh, in the Preston Precinct Master Plan. So we do want to call on the state government to halt the process, to bring some further negotiations back to the uh, council, but also just find out just what exactly triggers the land sales because at this point in time we're not quite clear other than the fact they want to get rid of the land and perhaps we see some cash in return. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Mr. Mayor. The second one, so anything? Just to say, look, this, this is a really important pedestrian pathway between High Street and Preston Market. If it's closed off, it really closes the community between High Street shoppers and the Preston Market. You'll have, otherwise, you'll have to actually go further distance all the way to the main roads, which I believe is, is really disconnects the community for that reason. Okay, thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Gregor. Yeah, look, um, I, I just want to make a few points. Just in light of the, the motion that we just um, uh, passed by Council, I think Councillor Lee raises a very good point, and um, um, we've got to make sure that these processes, that we're vigilant, and that we um, strike at these, pro uh, at these, uh, at these um, land sales by, by the state government <coughs> right, at the, right at the beginning, right at the, because then otherwise, if we don't, what happens is that uh, we just get steamrolled by all these government um, and bureaucrats, all these government processes, and in the end, then we have the community uh, trying to sort of um, crawl back um, the situation. So Council Lee makes a very important point. I think we need to ask, why is this land deemed to be surplus? And, and we should be consulted on that before any processes actually start, because the land is amongst them, um, 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 is, is within Darabin. We know the significance of that land, and it's just courtesy for government departments and ministers to consult with local government before they launch into processes that completely steamrolls. Particularly, I must say now, that the government has actually have started this uh, um, uh, a new process where it's fast tracking, it's fast tracking and rezoning. And what that means, in that fast tracking of rezoning, it means that the terms, the, the terms of reference for that is that the community cannot consider uh, community use for, that, for, for those uh, uh, tracts of land. The only, the only thing that the panels will listen to as part of their terms of reference is what sort of development should occur. So that's why it's important that we get right in there, right at the beginning, with the state government, and actually talk about these sort of things before we get steamrolled. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor McCarthy. Look, I, I, I'm just struck by Councillor Greco's point, and I think we need to emphasise the seriousness of this. Um, and I would like to think that through this additional resolution, should it succeed, that we will have a regular update on where we are with these processes, because it's clear um, by instituting this fast-tracking process that the state government has effectively done what private developers 
um, have managed to achieve through the VCAT process, which is to find a fast track mechanism to get the outcome that they want. And the outcomes that they want in these cases are actually about maximising the speed and the size of a sale of public land to, in many cases, a private entity. Because if a council can't afford it or doesn't deem it appropriate for sale, council is put in an invidious position where it either purchases the land or allows it to go to the private market and the people that are disenfranchised in the process are the community. So it is ironic um, that we are dealing with almost a, a very, not a, not a similar piece of land, but a similar situation. And I would ask whether, um, maybe through you, Mr Mayor, whether there is a mechanism for us to have a regular update in the way that we have with planning applications, um, an update on government land. Until we see a change at the state level on this issue, this is going to continue to happen because obviously there is a big long list of land that government owns which it is desperate to sell to the highest bidder and we need to uh, intervene on behalf of our community and we, I think we need to keep on top of this. So I would ask through you Mr Mayor um, to the CEO whether there is a mechanism um, that council can have to get a regular update on this otherwise I'd be proposing an amendment oh, as great, such. Great. I, I think we, we get those, so yeah we're more vigilant now uh, Mr Sir, seeing that obviously the state government has an agenda with these surplus lands and sites they've identified. Yeah. Okay there's no further debate, oh, Councillor Lawrence. Um, yeah I'll just speak in favour of the motion. We, right. Any uh, people want to speak against because I'm conscious of the time we're just hearing the same thing I think so make it quick Councillor Lawrence please. Um, just, that, just to highlight the importance of this pedestrian link between a market which is on the brink of a redevelopment. And if we do not have increased pedestrian links back to the high street, then any you know, ben economic benefits of a redeveloped market are, are, are dampened for those traders on high street. So this flies in the face of basic town planning. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I'll now put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, Councillors. Next item of consideration is um, 6.2, the Safe Travel Strategy for 2010-2015. Councillor McCarthy. I'm happy to second it, Mr. Councillor Villala. Councillor McCarthy. Oh, look, I'll keep it brief, Mr Mayor. I recognise there's a lot on the agenda this evening. Um, I would just point out that this is our, our progress report um, on our work and a review of the Durban Dar Safe, um, Safe Travel Strategy. Um, I had the pleasure uh, in 2010, uh, in fact, of, of moving for the adoption of this document and I would say that one of the key things that we have done in that time as a, as a city is adopt um, a range of reforms to our own transport um, planning processes. We have the Darabin Transport Advisory Committee um, and the Bicycle Advisory Committee and an active role with a range of our other committees in terms of how we think about um, transport and traffic safety. And I think the, the, the critical thing here is that we've also followed through, as, as councillors would see, on a number of projects which are about improving the safety um, experience, for, particularly for students making their way to school, for our older, older residents who um, are at greatest risk of speeding vehicles, and, uh, and in many cases uh, making some actual physical changes to the road landscape um, to actually reduce the likelihood of vehicles um, colliding with both walkers pedestrians of course and, uh, and of course also cyclists. Um, so we have seen some, some achievements. We have also seen I think a really critical shift as a city which is that we now have precinct based transport plans and fundamental th to those is actually about how we think about the safe routes through which people make their way um, to either work, school, um, to the shops, wherever it might be. This uh, report provides um, obviously uh, a number of uh, achievements and outcomes and of course our response in relation to um, the various targets that we set. Um, I would say, that, and there's one that jumps out for me under targets, um, there was a 27% reduction in fatal crashes in the city of Darabin uh, over the p years 2011 to 2015. Um, I think that is a, an enormous achievement and uh, I think you know, to, to reduce by, uh, by more than a quarter is, is great, but it's not enough and, uh, and it's not enough given that we are seeing more vehicles making their way through our city, particularly travelling from the north of our city to the south, um, and a lot of people that are stressed and, uh, and often doing rat running and, and erratic behaviour. So we need to make sure that we're on top of this um, and that when we talk about the work that we're doing with our community, um, that we continu continually make the case for the state government investment in road safety um, 
it's all good and well for the TAC to have a campaign to talk about towards zero. Um, it's another thing for them to actually support our changes that we've proposed, and one of those is actually prioritising signalised crossings and safe routes for local students and local young people and our older residents. I'll end it there, Mr Mayor. I would want to also just thank, though, our officers for all the work that they do, because we have an amazing transport safety team here at Darabin, and their work is cutting edge. Um, and I think if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to achieve the sort of outcomes that we've had in this report. Thank you for that brief summary, Councillor McCarthy. Yes. Councillor Lola, yeah. <laughs> said brief. Well, I was conscious of time. Very 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 Councillor Lola. Yes, Mr Moore, thank you. Look, I am I, I'm also conscious of time, uh, but I, I think this is really important. Uh, when I read the report today, uh, because this uh, safe travel strategy uh, started in 2010, was before my time. So when I, you know, um, so it was all, it was a very interesting read. And, and the one thing that struck me, the statistic that struck me, Mr Mayor, is that um, during the, the life of this particular strategy, uh, which obviously the objective was to, minima, to, to improve um, uh, safe travel in, in the city of Darabin, with the investment of $1 million, which I think is council money, and external funding was 600,000, uh, we achieved, in the five years between 2011 and 2015, four pedestrians died in Darabin, which is obviously four too many, with no deaths recorded for bike riders. However, overall, though the target of zero deaths was not met, unfortunately, there was a 55% reduction in deaths of vulnerable road users compared to the preceding five years. And I think that that is uh, very, very significant. Um, so in order, to, uh, in order to maintain uh, road safety, you have to invest some money. And uh, you invest the money, you do the work, you've got the cutting edge policies and strategies and personnel, and you get, uh, you get results. This strategy has now come to an end, and the recommendation, Mr Mayor, is, you know, future action, sorry, is to develop a subsequent um, strategy. The challenge for Council, if we wish to maintain, um, to keep our eye on this particular uh, you know, objective and space, which is important, is we need to lobby the state government hard and other external bodies to, uh, to provide funding, because we can't do it all. So um, the other thing important to note, time, and I'm very proud of, time. Time. the first council to buy a speed trailer. Time. I think that's really important. Yes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes. Mr. Anything Mayor. new to add? Yeah, Councilor I do Breaker, actually have something new to add, Mr Mayor. Thank and, you, Councillor And Councilor I'm going to look at this from a, a tribe board perspective. And, and I was really pleased to see the report, and I endorse what the other councils do. But in relation to the Latrobe board, um, part of this campaign was, was the success in reducing the, uh, the, the, the speed zone yes. uh, to 40 kilometres along Broadway and, and Edward Street. And I think that's a significant uh, achievement. Yeah. And, uh, and, that's been, and that was as a result, that Councillor Villela said, because we're able to lobby the state government, because those roads are state government roads, we as the council were able to lobby the state government. It was actually particularly, at the time it was around about an election time, so that's why they um, were able to sort of get into it. Uh, but they were able to, um, were able to lobby to get the, uh, the, 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 um, the zone, get a 40 kilometre zone in, in those particular, so I commend this report and I commend the work that's there. There's lots more that needs to be done, but um, it's great to see some really positive results. Thank you, Councillor Greco. If there's no further speaker, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? Councillor Walsh? I know, no, sir. I'll go in I'll favour. do the vote again. All those in favour? Carried. Thank Can you. we have that noted as unanimous, please? It's noted unanimously. Thank you for the minute takers. Next item is 6.3, the sporting fees and charges I'll policy, impact on micro clubs. I'll uh, move the uh, motion um, with a slight amendment after the word policy. And the amendment is, and that officers report back with a report on the costs and benefits to put in place extra fee relief for micro clubs. Was this circulated that... before Councillor Lawrence? No. Thank you. So can we have that written and submitted to the officers? <coughs> Councillor Greco oh, has seconded. Councillor Lawrence, you have the floor. Three minutes. Um, yes, Mr Mayor. This, this uh, report looks at a number of micro, what we're calling micro clubs. Some of these clubs have been historically in the city for many years with volunteers giving incredible amount of time um, to run clubs. And through the more kind of commercial um, uh, fee structure, these clubs 
actually run run and don't charge their members $1,000. They may charge them $2 or $1 or no dollars and they provide recreation, drop-in areas and a range of activities, often in substandard recreation facilities that flood and have damp and yet are being slugged $1,700 and more for their, um, their clubs. I think there has to be some basic humanity. There's some of them here, obviously, Macedonian Pigeon Club, Australian Federation of Hellenic Gym Gymnastics and Athletics Associations that are using fairly minor facilities and, in fact, um, you know, shouldn't be uh, looked on as clients, at commercial clients as such. Um, the other thing, of course, that's not factored in is the electricity costs of these substandard clubs is also crushing the budgets of these people and we probably should look at how we can assist them into lower energy um, options as well. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor yeah, Walsh, just, just Hamill, Councillor Griffiths. Look, I, I welcome Councillor... I know, I've just, just got to speak. Councillor Griffiths, yeah. second, I, I speak welcome, first. Um, um, this report, I welcome the amendment put forward by Councillor Lawrence. I, I think the report only goes part of the way in trying to um, um, in trying to address um, the issues that may be faced by micro clubs, and um, and here in this report there are suggestions of how council can assist the micro clubs of shifting them away from um, from from um, high cost facilities to uh, basically uh, very low cost facilities, or even using the grant, the community grant system to actually not pay any fees at all. So that's very much welcome. But I think we really need to keep a tab on some of the other clubs that may not be considered to be micro per se, but actually may be feeling some um, 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 stress as a result of the, the new policy that we introduced. I must say that the new policy that we have introduced has brought in some very good results so far in terms of um, uh, rebalancing the um, the, the gender, gender uh, participation rates in the city, and I think we should really uh, commend that, and also the participation rates, of encouraging the participation rates of communities that don't necessarily use um, our sporting facilities. So whilst we try to do something good, we have to also be mindful that if there may be some bumps along the way, and that we can't leave people behind us, because we have to bring everyone along the way with us. Because that very, the very policy in itself is about trying to bring everybody to towards uh, fully participating in data sporting facilities and not to lose them. So I commend um, the report and I commend the future report. To, uh, and I look forward to the future report coming back to Council. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Walsh. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm going to speak um, on this and I'm going to speak in favour. Um, originally, um, before the, before the amendment. Um, I was actually planning on speaking on this, but I was actually planning on speaking against. Um, but because of, the, um, thanks, because of the amendment, I'm going to um, spe um, speak in favour. It's been no, um, Mr Mayor and Council, it's been no secret um, that I've been um, a sceptic of, um, um, of this policy and have said on the record that um, 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 that I have um, um, reservations and therefore don't support um, don't support the policy. But um, the the reason why I'm but I'm glad that we're um, going to, um, going to be making um, and the reason is because I am concerned about the impact that it would have on clubs and you know reading this part of the report finding um, finding. Um, working with um, counts um, clubs to find more um, affordable um, venues. That's um, I looked at that and said, see, that's why I'm opposed to this because we we can't we've got to be supporting clubs to stay in their venue and to stay in the um, um, in the city, um, and um, we've got to, and we can't and yes, gender equity is important but it shouldn't be done at the price of um, existing, existing sport clubs um, but I'm glad um, and I thank Councillor Lawrence for the report and Councillor Greco um, the, his, the, what he got in his speech um, gave me some um, has given me some um, confidence in, um, um, in it so I'm happy to speak. Thank you Councillor Walsh. If there's no further speakers, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried. 
Next item is uh, 6.4, uh, property maintenance that. service. I'll move that, Mr Mayor, with a, um, uh, I think I have an amendment. Yep, amendment was circulated earlier today yep, to councillors, yep. if that goes on the screen now. Thank you. Councillor Greco, do you have a seconder? Happy to second. Councillor, Councillor Lawrence, thank you. Uh, Councillor Greco. Okay, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, look first of all, I'm glad that we're able to, um, uh, th this follows on from a motion that um, I had, uh, had put forward some time back, asking officers to come back to council about why we stopped a particular service, which was the window and, um, and, and gutter cleaning service. I, I'm really happy that, uh, that it has come back to council because what has happened as a result of it coming back to council is that um, the officers have been able to look at this and actually, and I want to congratulate the officers, where they've been able to find a creative solution to essentially, or really, maintain the service uh, without any additional cost to council. Actually, uh, um, that there will be a slight increase to, to council, um, but it, 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 you wouldn't even consider it in, in the big scheme of things. So I really want to commend the officers for really thinking long and hard about this. It, uh, we're able to maintain the service and um, uh, without any um, really additional cost to uh, to the council. Why this service was done away with? It was done away with because the Commonwealth government actually pulled the plug on us. Not only us, but many other, um, obviously across the across the nation, where it would no longer provide this service. And look, and I think that's a sign of um, of many more things to come from the federal government in terms of. Um, their approach to, to age services where I fear that they're going to cut back on a lot of age services and we have, as a council have to be very, very vigilant and creative in terms of how we can maintain um, these services to give it. At the end of the day, the community, um, it doesn't matter how the service is really delivered as long as they actually um, get the service in a quality way. The other two points that I've added there is that uh, we should notify all the residents in, in appropriate languages, obviously, uh, that have used the service in the past uh, to work together with other eligible um, um, uh, uh, people, uh, that the service has been reinstated because many uh, fear that the that the council has abandoned them and and is not not continuing the service, and that also I think we should get a report in about six months' time about what the uptake of, of the service is again to ensure that we're doing the right things has been communicated and that people are back on board in receiving this important council service. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Uh, second, Councillor Lawrence, you wish to speak. Um, just briefly, Mr Mayor, it's uh, a very good news and it just reminds us of many services that we have for the age in Darabin are based on us using our collective strength to provide an affordable service and unfortunately in the property maintenance market it's quite expensive to get small tasks done and I have had a lot of residents ask me how to get things done cheaply and um, it, Jim's mowing and everything is actually beyond their means. So um, it's a pity the Essential Services Commission, probably um, losing sleep tonight as we pass this motion, it's a pity that some people want to strip local government back to a mean state. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Villola. I do wish to speak to this, Mr Mayor, because um, I, the, I, I want to just acknowledge the officer's uh, uh, work on this. Um, I think, there's, to me, um, there's, a, there's a real contradiction in the, the national conversation around the aged. In one, on the one hand, that we, you know, we're told people should stay at home longer, uh, we need to make them independent and not to be too reliant on, on the state, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yet, when there are these uh, programs that do allow people to stay in their homes longer and be independent, they tend to cut the services or the funding. So there's a real contradiction. But, um, but I, I'm really proud that, uh, uh, that the council officers have been able to, you know, kind of rectify this, uh, be, be a bit creative, um, and really work in the best interest of the, of the aged in our community. Because I think what this shows to me, Mr Mayor, is that uh, at Darabin City Council, our commitment to aged services is really entrenched in our culture and our psyche and the way that we approach some of these challenges. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. Uh, I think that's one of the defining features of Darabin City Council and, and I like to think in future when we are faced with other funding challenges that we really do, as Councillor Lawrence said, you know, put our collective forces together to, to, to come up with some creative um, solutions obviously, and also some investment, but, but this is a really important area where we do make uh, a difference uh, and uh, and I know you know living with an aged person and being surrounded by aged relatives 
these, these, this, bit, this kind of assistance really makes a big difference. And it's, it's really important for us to keep that in perspective. Thank you. Thank you, you Councillor Dollar. If there's no further debate, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? <coughs> That's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Noted unanimously. Noted unanimously, the minute takers. Uh, next item is our 6.5, the licence agreement for say no to racism training I'll package. I'll move that again, and I have a, an alternate motion. Moved, Councillor Greco, second to Councillor McCarthy, and this was actually circulated to Council today. It's now on screen for the gallery. Councillor Greco, what yours? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Again, look, uh, uh, again, this is another good news um, story for the for the city of Darabin, and um, uh, just basically what this um, report um, talks about is that uh, um, the Darabin City Council has developed a, a no to racism um, strategy and campaign, and the and uh, we've had the strategy since 2014, and uh, and it's been uh, one of our, um, our most important strategies that have been developed. So important that uh, what we see now it's before us in this report is that the South Australian government is actually interested in actually um, buying or, 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 or getting access to the uh, getting access to the uh, to to the training package for them to use in their in their government departments, and that's a quite a significant thing. I mean, here it is a little council in the um, somewhere in Melbourne where the state government of South Australia it wants to use. One of the things that we've developed, it really shows that the package that we have developed against um, racism is, is really at the, at the cutting edge of, um, of training tools in, in this particular space. And, and I think that should be commended. I think we should congratulate the officers in um, uh, putting these packages together, using these packages, um, because um, it's very important um, uh, training in order to maintain community cohesion. And I think that's quite significant. I want to congratulate the officers for, um, for what's in this report. The other two points that I put there in the, in the motion, uh, Mr Mayor, is that uh, given that the South Australian Government has taken on board these things, uh, we have a very active minister, uh, the Minister for uh, Multicultural Affairs, who's a local member, Robin Scott, who I know is, uh, has a very progressive attitude towards uh, uh, multicultural issues. And I think he would be interested in um, becoming aware of these, uh, uh, these packages that the Council has developed and for these packages actually to be used across the state government um, um, and public service and, then, and, then, and then further um, that, um, uh, that we also consider promoting these packages to, um, um, to, to the federal government. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor McCarthy, a seconder, do you wish to speak? Uh, look, I'll, I'll be really brief, Mr Mayor. I actually think that this is a testament to an area of Council's work which has emerged out of a long-term commitment to, obviously, multiculturalism and, and intercultural engagement. We saw the flip side of that, though, with the upsurge in, I think, um, discriminatory practices both in the community, um, in the private sector, through employers, through housing, and I think also um, at the general level um, through, in fact, some government <coughs> policy. And so it is really heartening to see the South Australian government actually recognise the value of these materials, their capacity to actually engage at both the community and the workplace <coughs> level, um, but also their desire to take on board the work that has been incubated here in this council with our officers and our community. Um, I think Councillor Greco is spot on with his amendment, which is that why wouldn't you roll this sort of a program out in state government? It's, uh, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, we know that there is racism, um, and it's sometimes not overt. Sometimes it is subtle, and it, it goes into even the employment practices that occur not just in the private sector, but also occasionally in the public sector as well. And, uh, and I think we need to actually step up the pressure on the state government in relation to this, because um, if the South Australian government can see the value in it, then why can't the Victorian government? Um, and from a council perspective, here is, here is something that works. Um, it can perfectly align with the Victorian Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities. And, uh, and here is a great opportunity to, uh, to follow through with that work as well. So I think we need to also acknowledge Councillor Greco's um, initiation of this a number of years ago as well, um, because it is bearing fruit. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. There's uh, no further discussion, but I will say it's a wonderful package and, and other councils are considering as well. So well done to everyone involved there. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. We can make that too. Yep. Thank you, yes. Councillor. Uh, next item is six points uh, six. The Council Plan 2013-17 Review. Okay. Councillor Lee, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lee. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Council Plan was adopted in the, in the term of this Council in the beginning of this uh, Council's term back in 2013. 
Um, every year we are required to review it and uh, to make any amendments and changes as necessary. Um, this being our last year uh, of this term of the Council, uh, it's appropriate that we do not make any dramatic changes and re-adopt the um, Council plan as it was adopted back in 2013 and to see us through the rest of the Council. I do note that uh, with the election of a new Council come end of this year, the new Council will be uh, in charge of developing a new Council plan just like we did uh, back all those four years ago beginning of our term. Thank you, Mr. Thank Minister. you, Councillor Lee. If there's no further speakers, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That item is carried. Thank you, councillors. Our next item is at 6.7, delegations of power, duties and functions to council staff. Happy to move. Move, councillor Walsh. Seconder? Councillor Lee, councillor Walsh. Um, look, this is fairly, um, this is fairly standard and, um, and, um, and procedural, but it's just um, giving the, um, the CEO and well and officers um, our approval to, um, to um, to do things under the delegation under the normal process. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. If there's no further comment from anyone, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, Councillors. That concludes our consideration reports. We now go to item seven, consideration of responses to notices of motion and general business. We have none for that. We have dealt with our item eight, notice of the motion already, early in the piece. We now go to item nine, urgent business. Mr. Yes. CEO. Mr. Mayor, we have received one from Councillor Greco, it's about a public forum for the possible candidates um, for Fatman seat in Preston Town Hall. I just want to inform the councillors. Um, if we can just, can um, we could, we, we, we've had an a, a, a urgent item, we've, yes. we've moved by Councillor Greco, the seconder for that. Councillor Lee, I'll put that to a vote to accept that. It's been accepted, thank you, councillors. Councillor. Sorry, yeah. Mr. Sayer, do you uh, want to speak to it? Yeah, just a uh, no, just uh, no, a few no, issues on that. Uh, the, it's a person town hall virtually the weekends are getting booked up. I just want to know. Yeah. We okay. need to do it quickly. <clears throat> Councillor Greco, do you want to speak to your urgent item? Oh, look, thank you, Mr. Mayor, no, and I thank councillors for accepting this as a motion. I reckon it's a seconder to the substantive. Oh, bigger, but yeah, Councillor Greco and a seconder, Councillor Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah. All those in favour? Please, Councillor Greco, give the floor. Could I just move a quick amendment? Yeah, I'll. Preston Town Hall or other venues? Yeah, other venues. And all other venues, yes. Thank you, it's been accepted, yes. Councillor Greco. Uh, look, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, just very quickly, uh, 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 sorry to bring this up such, at such late notice, but uh, we have a federal election, and, um, and it, this actually only came to my mind um, just basically on the weekend, um, on Sunday, when we had that um, big public meeting here in Reservoir, where there was this massive interest of all the um, political parties being present in terms of um, um, seeing what they can do for David and how they can make David a better place to live. And so I, I think that prompted me um, to uh, put forward a, uh, uh, an opportunity for the candidates in the, um, in the seat of um, Batman to, uh, uh, for the council to host an event and organise an event where we can um, um, actually hear the, the various candidates of what they've got to offer uh, particularly for Darwin. Now, um, the, the issue then, the, the issue is, is that um, th this particular seat is be, uh, has drawn national attention. It's become, if you like, in some way or another, a marginal type seat because of the contest that there is, that there, is there. And, and I think the candidates will be keen in actually putting out there what their vision for our city is and what they can bring to our city as, as representatives of, of our city. And I think that's important that, that we give them the opportunity and also that we give the community members an opportunity to, to ask questions of those candidates about that. And, and, if, and, and if I could just, um, j just, just add a little bit more to that, is that uh, we know that in our city, and we know that we're going to be faced with massive infrastructure uh, 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 potential pro pro uh, 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 programs or, or funding for infrastructure projects in our city. So we really need money from the, the feds in order to fund a lot of these things. We just saw on Sunday how money can easily flow when, when there is the pressure. Yeah? And you know, we're talking about NARC, we're talking about other major, we're not talking about one or two million dollar projects, we're talking about 40, 50 million dollar projects that council alone could not do. Now I know that in many other uh, 
uh, marginal seats, particularly in regional areas, lots of money flows in. Lots of money flows in by federal members. We haven't seen that in the past. I think there's a real opportunity for us to, to hear the, the, the MPs and, and to actually get something delivered on the ground for, for Darren. And the other issues I think we need to deal with is housing affordability. We've talked a lot about seconds. that. We've always said that it's a national issue. We're here as our national potential national representatives. Let's hear what they've got to say. And the other one is about youth. Uh, youth I'll stop there, Mr. Thank Becker. Thank you, Councillor Becker. Councillor Walsh. Um, a couple of things. Um, uh, so you questions? Because I've got a second to um, speak first. Yes, I have got questions. What are the questions? And also, um, I'll declare a very small interest as um, I'm a, um, in a campaign management position right. with a Senate candidate. Right. Um, my question is to Councillor Greco. Um, would it be your intention if, um, the Batman, um, if a Batman candidate was not available that they would be able to send um, another candidate? Would it be representative, you mean, representative? And a representative. Oh, look, I, 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 would, I would assume. It's, it's up to, up to We them. invite the candidate. If the candidate wants to send their cat or dog, it's up to them. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Greco. <laughs> Thank That's you, Councillor. Could I? I'm sorry. Um, we understand. Um, we understand. Can I ask Councillor? Um, can I ask Councillor about how was? Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Look, it probably wasn't intent, but we. Oh, we, we it's intent. It's it's intent. Yeah, yeah, well, I've, I've actually heard it in federal parliament too. Yeah, I but then, the second I wish to speak. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, uh, Councillor Bracker touches on a very important point because uh, the seat of Batman is um, uh, notionally marginal. Uh, it's been plastered all over the national news, and. Uh, it's good to see that both the um, ALP candidate um, has committed money to the uh, William Ruthman side, uh, and so has the, um, the Greens Party uh, candidate also committed her party into funding for that site should they be successful. So it goes to show that irrespective of the issues that we're dealing with in this chamber, there is where there is cohesion, where there is synergy between local government, state government and federal government, our local elected representatives are willing to face up to uh, the voters and put the money where their mouth is. I think that's really, really important. Um, it is also important for this election in particular to hear about some of the issues that worries us mm. from Darabin's perspective. Uh, we heard from Councillor Greco earlier about uh, NARC, but let's not forget some of the things that we're dealing with in terms of social housing, as he said, but also the great separation, the opportunity for social and economic redevelopment of the city. And we cannot do it alone as a local council. We need both federal and state government uh, funding on this. And the best way to do it is to bring the candidates to the table and perhaps even, um, you know, I, I think the, um, what we haven't heard from the Ruthman debate is that with the Liberal Party put some money to it, it would be lovely if they can get six million dollars to the table. That might solve some of the problems. Yep. But that's another issue for the candidates to face should they choose to take up the opportunity to present to us. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor Walsh first. Um, I've got another um, question which I do have to ask um, from after clarifying something from a um, from the chief executive. Um, would it be your intention to um, to um, um, to leave it open to um, Senate candidates as well if um, if no if no candidate is um, if a Batman candidate is not available? Yes or no? Oh. To see a Batman, so it's, it's a separate it's item yeah, altogether. It's a lot of house. It's pretty could clear. It, could um could it include um could it include um an upper house candidate if a Batman candidate was P not? Point of order, Mr. Mayor. It's up. The, if I'm correct, the motion is quite clear. Yeah, it is. The candidates for seat of Batman. If 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 a candidate can't attend and they want to send their dog or their friend or their cat or their or their Senate representative. Then that's yeah, at your discretion, Mr. Mayor. You don't have to that's not so the Senate this. candidate would be invited. Well, it's up it's to the representative. It's up to the candidate. To decide. It's, it's, to the it's candidate. chosen by the candidate. Okay. The candidate. Any other speakers for this? Uh, look, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to speak very quickly. I actually really welcome Councillor Greco's um, initiative on this, and I think it's uh, this is our one opportunity as a city um, to actually talk about what's important as a city. Uh, given that the boundaries of this city make up almost the entire federal seat, and it's, it's, a, it's a unique, not a completely unique situation, but it is um, not the situation that faces many LGAs who are spread across multiple um, uh, F, uh, federal electorates. 
Um, so we have a unique opportunity to talk about those issues that are close to our hearts, obviously as a city, and, and when I say we, it's not us, it's our community, and giving them a platform and an opportunity to have that kind of dialogue that Councillor Gregor mentioned. The other thing though, and I think we need to touch on it here, is that we are a city that's undergoing significant change and we have to look at the issues around housing affordability, um, where we are seeing many of our residents pushed to the margins, the loss of, uh, of low-income housing in a whole range of parts of our city, um, from the south through to the north now, and uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing property prices going through the roof. And I think if we don't actually tackle this issue with the federal representatives, um, regardless of who they are, then uh, and we're actually not doing our community a, a, a great service. So um, I actually think that this is a really welcome move. What I would say, though, is that um, if, if this is going to be successful, it needs to actually be widely advertised so that a lot of people know about it. So I would welcome and I would just ask that we take that, that, that proposal very seriously, um, that uh, we get the message out there because it is very short time frame and, uh, and, and we need to get kicking on this straight away. Yeah. I just, Mr. Mayor, I, I think there should be a correction to the to the motion as suggested by Councillor and, and the CEO. It should be the, the Preston Town Hall or other appropriate yeah. venue. Other venues, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just right. to make sure that we put that if in. If available, the motion, yes. Yeah. All right. Any other speakers to the item? If not, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Can we Thank you. Note that what, as you know that as a you know, this decision too. Thank you. There's no further urgent items, so we'll now move on to um, general business. And no general business, Mr. CEO. We've dealt with item 11, um, petitions. We now go to item 12, records of assembly of councillors, 12.1. Have someone moved that? Council Lee has moved. Second to Councillor Greco. I don't think there's any speakers, so we'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? All those in favour? Again, I'll try that again. Carried. Next item is. Um, 13 reports by mayors and councillors, which have been um, submitted today by most councillors. What's, in, uh, what's been given to councillors, what will appear um, in the minutes? And those who haven't or have no time to do those can do so and include them for the next meeting. Uh, moved. Mine was, just, can I just check that mine was circulated by our email, but it was quite late. But that, that one, it's not included. Councillors haven't read the email, so that's fine. I'll okay. include it next, ne time. next meeting. Yeah, Having a second. Move, move Councillor Williams. Second to Councillor McCarthy. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you, councillors. We now go to item 14, consider reports confidential. Uh, we now need to um, uh, consider items which are in confidence, so we need to close to meeting. So we have so move, move to close the meeting, Councillor McCarthy, seconded Councillor Lee. All those in favour? Carry. Um, members of the gallery, if you can just vacate the chambers for a moment, we've just got to dis discuss this item in confidence. We shouldn't be too long. You can join us for refreshments to the rear of us in the function room in a moment. So thank you, members of the gallery. Which minister was it, Cleon Parker? Shadow Minister. Kate Ellis. Kate Ellis. Minister for Childcare. I've got a feeling that 